Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and today the function of the day is reduce a KV, or reduce a key value. It looks a lot like reduce, and so I thought it'd be good to cover why we would use this, and what the, just when you would consider using reduce KV over normal reduce, all right? So it works like this. Uh, let's, uh, Start with zero, and you pass in an associative, associative collection, uh, like a, a hash map here. And what you get inside of your uh, your reducing function is you, you now provide a function that takes three arguments, not two. Uh, the first value is the accumulator, and then after that we have the key and the value. So if we do println ack k and v, and then we just plus ack and v. Um, we need to include core here. All right, there we go. So here's our output. First, our accumulator is 0, as we passed in, and our first value is 1. And then we get 2, and then 3, and each time we are adding that to the accumulator so that our final output is 6. Now you may look at this and say, why would I use this over any other uh, over you know normal reduce? Well, let's take a look at it real quick. If we look at the uh, the implementation of this, this calls an internal protocol called KV reduce, and KV reduce in turn calls um, well we can find usages of this, um, but let's see, find usages, yeah. Probably don't want to go that way. Um, but what we can do is we can look at the hash map. Let's, let's, let's dig into um, the implementation of array hash map. That's probably going to be the best way to, to go about this. Um, so hash map calls persistent hash map create. And if we dig into the code for this, we can find reduce uh, IKV reduce. And that's this interface right here. IKV reduce is a interface that has a single method called KV reduce. All right, we're just we're just going in circles now, right? Um, um, basically, there's parts of this hash map where the um, the keys and values are laid out in an array. It's key value, key value, key value, right? Now, in a normal reduce, what's it going to return, right? If we do a seek, for instance, on one on a hash map of A1, B2, um, for each one of those items, it's got to create a key value map, which basically in this case looks like a vector, but it's a key value map, uh, mapping. Um, and we would have to create that object, right? So creating that object isn't, it isn't free. I mean, you are allocating a new object every time. Maybe the JIT will remove it, maybe it won't. But in this case, what we can do is with this KV uh, map, it's just going to pass through so our KV reduce is going to pass through the key f uh, item from the array and the value without ever allocating anything in between. So we can go back to our um, code here, and we could see that we could actually change this back to, re to normal reduce and run it, and it runs exactly the same. But the fact that we're destructuring here kind of shows that what we had to do is, is rip apart a structure that something else had already created. So we're creating this, this KV pair, and then we're taking it apart and throwing it away. So using um, reduce KV not only requires less characters here in our function, I mean, it kind of takes the same amount told, all told, but it is a little bit faster. Now, the other thing, too, that's interesting, is that reduce KV works on associative collections. Now, another thing that's associative is actually vectors. You may have seen this before, um, but if you get from a vector um, using integers, you can treat it actually as a um, as a hash map, if you will, kind of an associative collection. But the keys are always integers, right? So what you can do is associ into one, two, three, and we're going to take the uh, item at index zero and change it to a, and we actually get a two three, right? So so we can use a soch. Um, I'm not sure that we can a dissoch. That might be possible. I'm 
pretty sure it is, but it always has to be the last item. Uh, no, it's not. It's just associative. It's not this. It doesn't support dissociation. But the other thing that's interesting about this is that because it is associative, because it is associative, we can actually use a vector here as well. And a, b, and c. And if we run this, what we see is um, now these were supposed to be integers, weren't they? Um, one, two, and three. There we go. We get the same value result, uh, but in this case, our keys are uh, integers, one, two, and three. Right now, there's not really any benefit. In fact, it's reduced KV is is if you're not using this key here, uh, it's probably slower to use reduced KV on a vector. Uh, but the thing that you can do with this is uh, treat uh, vectors and maps the same way. Right, you're using the same code. So it's something to think about. Vectors and hash maps are the same in the sense that you can both you can reduce over them both using reduce KV. Uh, you can associate to them. You can get from them. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's 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 reduce KV. It's slightly faster. I tend to use it just for clarity's sake, so I don't have to do the structuring. Um, I find reduce KV to be a bit cleaner than the syntactic noise of something like this, um, and also. Um, you get that kind of polymorphic benefit of being able to get the key and the value for a vector. Uh, this right here won't work, right? Because reduce on a vector is only going to return the value. So in this case, we don't have a key, and we could remove the reference to the key, and it would still work. But the problem is that if we really wanted the key, if we wanted this indexed, we would have to do something different. Um, and we'll probably in another tutorial co cover a way to do that. Um, but for now, uh, I just use reduce KV. It's nice and it works well. At any rate, that's the tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching.